The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwm.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Alligator hunting is its just not like anything else I've ever done. I don't know, you get anxious, you get excited, you get nervous. We're in East Texas on a property that we call the Nature's Refuge. We got a little thing called Earth Day to celebrate. In 1996, the we introduced you to John Stark. John combines music with an environmental message. I'm going to pick up the trash. taking Texans outside for 30 years. This is the J.D. Murphy Wildlife Management Area, and it's summer in the marsh. This is one of the best places in Texas to hunt alligator. Alligators usually have a small area that they'll use, so you can kind of keep an eye out and set your line where you actually see an alligator. Every September, a hundred or so lucky Texans get drawn to hunt gators here. The J.D. Murphy Wildlife Management Area is roughly 24,000 acres of wetland habitat. If you don't know your way around the J.D. Murphy WMA, it can be difficult to get around. Everything at times kind of looks the same. And it's in a part of Texas that a lot of people have not explored before. That's definitely the case for these three. Meet Spencer Burke, Scott Moore, and Terry Skull. Yeah, he was just right here. Looked like about a seven footer, probably. The area that we're hunting in, it's a, it's a vast bayou of swamps and marshes with canals running through. The adrenaline rush is way more than deer hunting or, or anything else because you're after something that can actually get you. There's one probably about 10 foot and two seven footers right up here. About 150 yards, we're gonna try to put a set. Spencer has hunted gators before and is taking Terry and Scott out for the first time. Come up here trying to sneak up on some uh, alligators and see how big they are. See if there's any slides or tracks. You got to run right here. So yeah. he's coming, it's coming right up here. Well, we do alligator hunting because it's just something unique, it's different. There he is. Pretty good one too. We're out in sort of a harsh environment with the swamps, the mosquitoes, the alligators, the snakes. It's something you just can't do every day. I like this over here. It looks pretty good. Using a long cane pole, He's almost got it. the idea is to attach the bait to a roped hook and dangle it just above the water. How high does that look? 24 inches? No, 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 no. That's too high. That's way too high. If you put it too low to the water, the small gators will, will knock it down, or even turtles can get to it. That's good. Perfect. I think this spot's good. We've got the wind direction that'll carry the scent down the uh, canal. And uh, we've actually got a gator down there looking at us right now. Mr. Alligator's down there just waiting for us to leave so he can get 
snack time at three o'clock. I like it. Good job, Terry. <laughs> Deeper into the marsh, Spencer and Terry set up their poles. I don't know, kind of get excited. Never been gator hunting before. Come out here and see probably 10 gators so far. You, you know, you see them on TV and, and uh, see the alligator shows, and this is exactly what it looks like where they're traveling in and out of. Our bait is chicken thigh quarters. Those smell savory. It's savory, that's for sure. Mm. And we let them sit out in the sun for a day or two, and they got quite ripe. Upwind's better than downwind when you get those things out. I like putting my bait about 18 inches above the water. Hopefully, we'll catch a little bit bigger gator. Oh, that hey, smells man. terrible. I offered y'all some of this stuff. Man, that is putrid looking, man. It stinks. That's gonna get one. Yeah. Hopefully we've got them high enough where we'll get some big gators and we'll go see what we got when we get out there tomorrow. In September of 2008, Hurricane Ike bore down on Texas. The hurricane not only wiped out parts of Galveston and the upper Texas coast, about 100 miles to the east, a storm surge hit J.D. Murphy with a wave of salt water. It was real eerie the day after Ike. You know, you go out, there was no birds, there was no frogs, nothing. It was, you couldn't hear, it was just complete silence. It was kind of nerve-wracking. It killed alligators for months after, you know, Ike landed, and it just devastated the landscape. But over time, J.D. Murphy has recovered. Now this coastal marsh is back. Prime habitat for not just alligators, but for wading birds and wintering waterfowl. <laughs> Biologists gauge the gator population by checking nest success. Well, the nest is over here, and it looks like there's a few. Uh gathered up over here. Usually they stay by the nest for quite a while. And these guys are days, if even hours old. Little bitty guys. Hard to imagine this guy getting 10 feet long. Oh, my net, they're going right through my net. <laughs> <laughs> this year is the first year since Ike that things kind of got back to normal. Uh, we had more nesting uh, than we had in probably eight years this year. So that's a good sign for us. It's really neat to see them, not only just to be able to see all these little baby alligators and, and be here just moments after they've hatched, but just to see our numbers rebound shows that, that we do have huntable numbers and, and we have a, have a population that can support a hunt. It's almost like Christmas morning, being a little kid waiting for Santa Claus to come. You ready? We're all ready. pumped up and, and ready to go see what we got. Woo! I had trouble sleeping last night. I was so excited about checking the lines. I think we're going to have some gators on this morning. Hey, we got one, guys. Oh, we got one? Yep. Ooh, he pulled out all the line, too. Here we go. He's not wanting to come now. Here we go. What do you think, he's seven foot? He's over seven foot. Oh, you're just anticipating, you don't know, really know what's on there. And he's pulling against you, and you're fighting against him, and all of a sudden he shows up. Well, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then it's on, then. When he sees you, you see him. I am amped up. Adrenaline's pumping. All right, Spencer, whenever you get ready. Santa Claus was good. <laughs> Looks good. No line left. In the end, it was a successful morning, as all three had a gator on the line. All right. Alligator hunting is its just not like anything else I've ever done. Hold on tight, Terry. OK. You know there's one on the line, and you start pulling me in. And I don't know, you get anxious, you get excited, you get nervous. I'm not happy. And you don't know if you're going to catch an alligator until you pull it up, and you really don't even know how big it's going to be. Hold on. His tail's on the, on the bottom. I can feel his tail kicking off the bottom. We were quite surprised today. We've got a, a good eight and a half footer, a seven and a half footer, and probably six and a half footer. 
Smile, smile, smile. One, two, and three. Excellent. Good job. This is a great experience. If you like to hunt and fish, or, or even if you know, you're just interested in something that's completely different than maybe anything you've ever done, I would recommend it for sure for anybody who hadn't done it. We're in East Texas on a property that we call the Natchez Refuge. It's a very special property, has lots of diversity, bottomland hardwoods, transitional post oak savannas and pine plantation uplands, and lots of wildlife, and just a beautiful property. This is one of Four Star's premier East Texas timberland recreation properties located along the Natchez River. It's 1,800 acres. And one of the prime features is a 40-acre green tree reservoir waterfowl impoundment. This impoundment holds wintering waterfowl throughout the season. We try to manage the water throughout the year. This time of year, we try to pull the water down and let the trees respond, let them grow through the summer and the growing season. Four Star is a, primarily a real estate company with assets in oil and gas and water resources and timberland. One of our core beliefs here at Four Star is sustainability and environmental protection. And you can see it in every aspect of our management practices here on this property. Wow, look at the candle on that. Four Star manages its forest in a sustainable manner. In the past, timber companies kind of had a bad name about coming in and just cutting all the timber and walking away. But things have changed and we realized that we had to ensure for the future that we wanted to leave this forest in a better shape than when we found it. Growing trees is our business, but we do know that we need to take care of the environment and protect water quality and provide for wildlife habitat. It does provide a lot of diversity for recreation, for wildlife, for aesthetics, and of course the Natchez River, we're protecting it. Four Star placed about 400 acres voluntarily into a conservation easement and the easement protects the property from ever being developed, restricts harvest, it protects wildlife and wildlife habitat, and also provides for aesthetic quality for canoers or boaters that might be boating the Natchez River along the Davy Crockett Paddle Trail. Swamp chestnut. Looking at a swamp chestnut oak, it's a, it's a white oak and a super food source for white-tailed deer. I enjoy coming out and watching the trees grow, listening to the birds sing, seeing deer. I really enjoy working out here. I grew up here in East Texas and really feel at ease, feel at home in the woods. That's that heron flying right here. And I know that through our management efforts here at the Nature's Refuge, that whenever I leave this place, it's gonna be in good shape. Wish you could spend more time with nature? Well, every month you can have the great outdoors delivered to you. Since 1942, Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine has been the outdoor magazine of Texas. Every issue is packed with outstanding photography and writing about the wild things and wild places of this great state. And now Texas's best outdoor magazine is available as an app. It's just that easy. Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine, your connection to the great outdoors. It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. We got a little thing called Earth Day. 
1996, we introduced you to John Stark. John combines music with an environmental message. He's sort of an ecotainer. John Stark had a normal enough childhood. He grew up with conservative small town values and did all the normal kid things. Even at an early age, he enjoyed performing for an audience. His family traveled a great deal, and over time, John developed a love for the outdoors, the natural world, and all its creatures. Everybody come over here. Just sit in a circle right here. Everybody sit right here. John used to teach environmental science with the Houston Independent School District. Today, this modern-day minstrel works for himself, traveling to schools, churches, summer camps, or anywhere where people want to hear his music. Pulling weeds and picking stones, we are made of dreams and bones. I feel the need to grow my own because the time is close at hand. The old crow watches hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. What I do is to come up with entirely upbeat, joyful, serious songs. Here we go, inch by inch, ready? And inch by inch, and row by row. That helps people's motivation. When they say, yes, when they have a positive attitude, yes, we can do this, this is a wonderful journey that we're in, this is wonderful work that we're doing. Inch by inch, and row by row, someone bless, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm, someone warm them from below, till the rains, till the rains come tumbling. Thank you, teachers. I want to be an example, a public example of someone who makes good wage, a good living, a comfortable living by doing something environmental. That's important because until people see that an environmentally sustainable way of living can be profitable, they won't do it. If they see that they can make a living at it, then they'll do it. Cool. Thank you. What's your name? Jamie, hi, it's good to see you again. I don't want to have to ask you to be quiet. Miss Goodwin is real stressed out right now, okay? Miss Goodwin is stressed out because she and her students are in the middle of an intense rehearsal. Tomorrow, these kids will be performing to nearly a thousand parents, teachers, and school administrators. And John Stark will lead them. Hey, my dear brother, hey, brother, come on over. Lie your head on Mother Nature's shoulder. Light a million candles and lovingly enfold her. On her day, it's a birthday, it's her day. We got a new day. Look around, it's a new day dawning. Bright sun above is a birthday candle. There was a little interlude there. And it Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it the way you guys are practicing. Here we go. Earth Day has become such a big deal, and it, I think that's wonderful. And we need to really make every day Earth Day and really teach them on a constant basis how to take care of what we have or it's not gonna be around any longer. We got a new way for a new day. Look around, it's a new day dawning. My day, it's your day. Bright sun above is a birthday candle. Oh, John Muir smiling up in heaven. Earth day, it's a birthday, it's her day. Oh, that was incredible, guys. It is really, it's more than okay. <laughs> It's okay. thrilling, that's what it is. You know, pretty soon, there's not gonna be an earth around to live on. 
I don't know that we can teach parents to do anything about it. But if we teach the kids to do something about it, maybe they can save something of what's left. But I feel like it's up to us as teachers to teach them. And I know some of their parents do teach them, and I think that's great. But by and large, I feel like it's our responsibility to, to really teach them the things that they need to know about saving the earth. Buddy, you're a young girl, young boy, slipping through the trash everybody throws down these days. It's all over the place, a big disgrace. Soon we're going to have to move to outer space, singing we can, we can fix it. We can, we can fix it. Hey, kid, nature has a cancer, but you are the answer. You're the one to lead the way. Start today, don't delay. All God's critters got a place to play. Singing, we can, we can fix it. Ooh, that'll be impressive. Ready to sing? One. Like many of his colleagues, John has discovered working on behalf of the environment has its disadvantages, especially on the financial side. Basically what's happening is I really ran out of money. I wasn't able to pay bills. I wasn't, um, just wasn't making it. And I'll probably always be doing what I'm doing, but after this year, um, it will take more of a background to what I'm, you know, some way of just making a living. and. That's been hard to accept. It's been a struggle, uh, but I haven't given up yet. We got a little thing called Earth Day to celebrate the land because the fate of the planet is resting in our hands. It's birthday. I'm gonna rock around Texas. I'm gonna pick up the trash. And then I'm gonna recycle it. And make me lots of cash. It's birthday. Got a little thing called Earth Day. Celebrate the land. Everybody sing along. The because the fate of the planet, fate of the planet, planet is resting in our hands. In our One hands. last thing. Here we go. It's Earth Day. John Stark is busy right now, but this is the week leading up to Earth Day. After that, his schedule looks pretty empty. If John had his way, every day would be Earth Day. His environmental message would be embraced, and he would have no problem finding work. Too bad for John. He lives in the city, where environmental issues are often obscured by matters of simple economic survival. Each day, he struggles to find support, both financially and artistically. John Stark is on a voyage. He's a messenger in search of an audience.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwf.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.